Hello, my name is Giso and I'm reading Shobogenzo. And I've got a bit of a lens flare on the screen, which I've not seen before. Oh, it must have been there before though, unless I just, no, no, turning that doesn't do anything. Oh well, I have a lens flare. I hope it doesn't upset you. We have reached chapter 21, Kankin, Reading Sutras, which is the last chapter of book one of the Nishijima Cross Shobogenzo edition. Kan means to read and Kin means sutras. Many Buddhist sects revere reading sutras because they think that the Buddhist truth is theory which can be understood through abstract explanation. They think that we can understand Buddhism only by reading sutras. At the same time, there are other sects who deny the value of reading sutras. They say that because Buddhist truth is not a theoretical system, we cannot attain the truth by reading sutras. Master Dogen took the middle way on the problem. Rather than denying the value of reading sutras, he said that reading sutras is one way of finding out what Buddhist practice is. He did not believe, however, that we can get the truth by reading sutras. He did not think that reciting sutras might exercise some mystical influence over religious life. In this way, Master Dogen's view on reading sutras was very realistic. However, his understanding of reading sutras was not limited to, write, to written sutras. He believed that the universe is a sutra. He thought that observing the world around us is like reading a sutra. So for him, grass, trees, mountains, the moon, the sun and so forth were all Buddhist sutras. He even extended his view of reading sutras to include walking around the master's chair in the middle of the Zazen hall. This viewpoint is not only Master Dogen's, it is the viewpoint of Buddhism itself. So in this chapter, Master Dogen explains the wider meaning of reading sutras. The practice and experience of Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi sometimes relies on good counsellors and sometimes relies on the sutras. Good counsellors means Buddhist patriarchs who are totally themselves. Sutras means sutras which are totally themselves. Because the self is totally a Buddhist patriarch and because the self is totally a sutra, it is like this. Even though we call it self, it is not restricted by me and you. It is vivid eyes and a vivid fist. At the same time, there is the consideration of sutras, the reading of sutras, the reciting of sutras, the copying of sutras, the receiving of sutras and the retaining of sutras. They are all the practice and experience of Buddhist patriarchs. Yet it is not easy to meet the Buddhist sutras. Throughout innumerable realms, even the name cannot be heard. Among Buddhist patriarchs, even the name cannot be heard. Amidst the lifeblood, even the name cannot be heard. Unless we are Buddhist patriarchs, we do not see, hear, read, recite or understand the meaning of sutras. After learning in practice as Buddhist patriarchs, we are barely able to learn sutras in practice. At this time, the reality of hearing sutras, reciting sutras, receiving sutras, preaching sutras and so on exists in the eyes, ears, tongue, nose and organs of body and mind and in the places where we go, hear and speak. The sort who, because they seek fame, preach non-Buddhist doctrines, cannot practice the Buddhist sutras. The reason is that the sutras are transmitted and retained on trees and on rocks, are spread through fields and through villages, are expounded by lands of dust and are lectured by space. Another. Great Master Kodo, the ancestral patriarch of Yakuzan Mountain, has not ascended his seat in the Dharma Hall for a long time. The temple chief says, The monks have long been hoping for your compassionate instruction, Master. Yakusen says, Strike the bell! The temple chief strikes the bell and a few of the monks assemble. Yakusen ascends the seat in the Dharma Hall and passes a while. Then he gets down from the seat and goes back to the abbot's quarters. 
The temple in chief follows behind him and says, Just before the master agreed to preach the Dharma for the monks, why have you not bestowed a single word upon us? Yakuzan says, For sutras there are sutra teachers, for commentaries there are commentary teachers. How could you doubt the old monk? The compassionate instruction of the ancestral patriarch is that fists is that for fists there is a fist teacher, and for eyes there is an eye teacher. At the same time, with due respect, I would now like to ask the ancestral patriarch this. I do not deny, do not deny your words, how can the old monk be doubted? But I still do not understand. The master is a teacher of what? The order of the founding patriarch Daikan is on Sokai Zan Mountain in, so in Shoshu district. Hotatsu, a monk who recites the Sutra of the Flower of Dharma, comes to practice there. The founding patriarch preaches, the, preaches for Hotatsu the following verse. We met Hotatsu before, haven't we? They were explained at length in chapter 17. Hockey 10, hockey the universe dwells the universe. When the mind is in delusion, the flower of Dharma turns. When the mind is in realization, we turn the flower of Dharma. Unless we are clear about ourselves, however long we like recite the sutra, it will become an enemy because of its meanings. Without intention, the mind is right. With intention, the mind becomes wrong. When we transcend both with and without, we ride eternally in the white ox cart. So when the mind is in delusion, we are turned by the flower of Dharma. When the mind is in realisation, we turn the flower of Dharma. Further, when we spring free from delusion and realisation, the flower of Dharma turns the flower of Dharma. On hearing this first verse, Hotatsu jumps for joy and praises it with the following verse. Three thousand recitations of the sutra with one phrase from Sokai forgotten. Before clarifying the import of Buddha's appearance in the world, how can we stop recurring lives of madness? The sutra explains goat, deer and ox as an expedient, but proclaims that beginning, middle and end are good. Who knows that even within the burning house, originally we are kings in the Dharma. When the founding patriarch says, from now on you will rightly be called the sutra reading monk, we should know that there are sutra reading monks in Buddhism. It is the direct teaching of the eternal Buddha of Sokai. Reading, in this phrase, sutra reading monk, is beyond having ideas, being without ideas, and so on. It is transcendence of both having and being without. The fact is only that from Kalpa to Kalpa, the hands never put down the sutra, and from noon till night, there is no time when it is not being read. The fact is only that from sutra to sutra, it is never not being experienced. The 27th patriarch is the vener venerable Prajnatara of Eastern India. A king of Eastern India, the story goes, invites the venerable one to a midday meal, at which time the king asks, everyone else recites sutras. Why is it, venerable one, that you alone do not recite? The patriarch says, My outbreath does not follow circumstances. The inbreath does not reside in the world of aggregates. I am constantly reciting sutras like this. Hundred thousand myriad coties of scrolls, never only one scroll or two scrolls. Right. The venerable Prajnatara is a native of an eastern territory of India. He is the 27th rightful successor from the venerable Maya Kasyapa. Having received the authentic transmission of all the tools of the Buddha's house, he has dwelt in and retained the brains, the eyes, the fist and the nostrils, the staff, the patra, the robe and the dharma, the bones and marrow, and so on. He is our ancestral patriarch and we are his distant descendants. The words into which the Venerable One has now put his total effort mean not only that the outbreath does not follow circumstances, but also that circumstances do not follow the outbreath. Circumstances may be the brains and eyes, circumstances may be the whole body, circumstances may be the whole mind, 
but in bringing here, taking there, and bringing back here again, the state is just not following circumstances. Not following means totally following. Therefore, it is a state of bustling and jostling. The outbreath is circumstances themselves, even so it does not follow circumstances. For countless Kalpas, we have never recognised the situation of breathing out and breathing in. But just now the moment has come when we can recognise it for the first time. And so we hear it does not reside in the world of aggregates and it does not follow circumstances. This is the moment when circumstances research for the first time such things as the in-breath. The moment has never been before, and it will never be again. It exists only in the present. The world of aggregates means the five aggregates, matter, perception, thought, inaction and consciousness. The reason he does not reside in these five, five aggregates is that he is in the world where five aggregates have never arrived. Because he has grasped the piv this pivotal point, the sutras he recites are never one or two scrolls. He is constantly reciting hundred thousand myriad kotis of scroll scrolls. Though we say that hundred thousand myriad kotis of scrolls just cites for the present an example of a large number, it is beyond only numerical quantity. It assigns the quantity of one hundred thousand myriad kotis of scrolls to one outbreaths not residing in the world of aggregates. At the same time, the state is not measured by tainted or faultless wisdom, and it is beyond the world of tainted and faultless dharmas. Thus, it is beyond the calculation of wise intelligence. It is beyond the estimation of intelligent wisdom. Excuse me. It is beyond the consideration of non-wise intelligence and it is beyond the reach of non-intelligent wisdom. It is the practice and experience of Buddhas and of patriarchs. It is their skin, flesh, bones and marrow, their eyes, fists, brains and nostrils, and their staffs and whisks springing out of the moment. Great Master Shinsai of Kanonin Temple in Joshu, the story goes, is sent a donation by an old woman who asks the great master to recite the whole of the sutras. The master descends from the zazen chair, goes round it once and says to the messenger, I have finished reciting the sutras. The messenger returns and reports this to the old woman. The old woman says, I asked him before to recite the whole of the sutras. Why did the master only recite half the sutras? Evidently, the recitation of the whole of the sutras or half of the sutras amounts to three scrolls of sutras in the old woman's case. I have finished reciting the sutras is the whole of Joshu's sutra. In brief, the situation of his reciting the whole of the sutras is as follows. There is Joshu going around the Zazen chair. There is the Zazen chair going around Joshu. There is Joshu going around Joshu. And there is the Zazen chair going around the Zazen chair. At the same time, all instances of reciting the sutras are neither limited to going around the zazen chair nor limited to a zazen chair going around. Great Master Shinsho of Daizui Zan Mountain on Ekishu, whose original Dharma name was Hoshin, succeeded Zen Master Dayan of Chokaiji Temple. In the story, an old woman sends a donation and asks the master to recite the whole of the sutras. The master descends from his zazen chair, goes round it once and says to the messenger, I have already recited the whole of the sutras. The messenger returns and reports this to the old woman. The old woman says, I asked him to recite the whole of the sutras. Why did the master only recite half the sutras? Now, do not study that Dai Zui is going around the Zazen chair and do not study that the Zazen chair is going around Dai Zui. It is not only a grouping together of fists and eyes, his making of a circle is in action of a circle. Does the old woman have the eyes or does she not have the eyes to see it? Even though she has got the expression, he only recited half the sutras, 
in the authentic transmission of a, from a fist, the old woman should also say, I asked him before to recite the whole of the sutras. Why did the master only worry his soul? If she spoke like this, even by accident, she would be an old woman with eyes. Come back to this tomorrow. Thank you for listening.